to allow Mr. Prime Minister, I want to talk about why alike. the sentiment has changed. I mean, obviously, there has been huge support and still is really big support here in the U.S. and in most corners of the world for you doing what you are saying. Your strategic goal is to defeat Hamas and to make sure that that kind of terror attack doesn't happen again. But what is happening and the reason why the world is shifting in public sentiment is the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Organizations call what they are seeing near famine in Gaza. So why won't you allow more food trucks to drive through the border crossings into Gaza to feed starving civilians while you continue to take out the terrorists in Hamas? Well, our policy is to do exactly that. And in fact, we've enabled well, our policy is to not to have famine, but to have the entry of uh, humanitarian support uh, as needed and as much as is needed. So we've allowed, we've created alternative uh, routes, supply routes. We allow the dropping of the support from the air, humanitarian aid, uh, a sea route uh, that we've cooperated with, uh, and it started yesterday, uh, and alternative land routes that we're enabling again. The problem isn't getting the trucks in. The problem is that once they're getting in, they're looted by Hamas or looted by gangs. And what we're seeing, what we're trying to do with some uh, uh, other powers is to try to get the uh, aid to the actual civilians who need them and not yeah. looted by Hamas. That's well, really the problem. Well, in every, any case, that's our policy. Major... And that's why I've, uh, uh, I've uh, enabled alternative routes of supply. Okay. Um... There's been a trickle, I mean, to be fair, of, of supply going in there. And every major NGO outside organization involved with this crisis says that the level of hunger is life-threatening for hundreds of thousands. Cindy McCain, uh, who the McCain family, they have been long supporters of Israel. She is now the executive director of the World Food Program. She said uh, that uh, hunger has reached catastrophic levels in northern Gaza. People are dying. Only a fraction of the food needed in is trickling uh, to prevent an outright famine. They need significant increase in humanitarian aid now. Millions of lives are at stake. Will you do that? Will you commit to that? Of course, and we're doing it. Again, I've authorized uh, alternative routes of supply. And again, the problem is not the number of trucks going in, although we're increasing it on a daily basis. I think the problem is preventing the looting by Hamas and by others. And that's what we're working on now. I think it's a cooperative effort. Our policy is to enable humanitarian aid. That's been uh, a constant uh, element uh, in, our, in our whole program. It, it, to destroy Hamas militarily, but also to supply the humanitarian With aid respect, simultaneously. With respect, sir, it's and not And the main happening. obstacle to that is actually it's, Hamas. It's not, it's not happening. Well, in the north, you, you well, said that is, you've destroyed actually. Hamas. If Hamas isn't in, in the north, then how is Hamas taking away food? And if you open up more border crossings and give well, more food into the, into, the, uh, into the area, allow starving people to eat, uh, the looting maybe would subside. That's human nature, no? That's, that's exactly what's happening, because we have increased the number of uh, trucks entering the north. Uh, I don't think, I think I'm up to date, and I know the, these numbers. And we know that there is, a, uh, th there is a, a, an increase, but we also know that we have a job to do to prevent the looting. Because, you know, at the end, we bring in the trucks, including to the north, and then they're looted by remaining Hamas terrorists. We've destroyed the fighting formations of Hamas. The, the terrorist battalions, but there's still individual guess, terrorists that were mopping yeah, and, up. And, and, and I these understand individual that. terrorists shoot the drivers, the, shoot the drivers, take over the goods, and try to give it to Hamas the, fighters, the remaining Hamas fighters. But, so it's an ongoing battle. I understand uh, but that. It's something but that you we're understand committed that it is to. the responsibility. That to. You, Destroying you, Hamas and giving humanitarian aid. Forgive me. I, I, I understand that. Given the images that I'm sure you have seen, do you believe fundamentally that it is Israel's responsibility to make sure that those starving civilians, including those children, get food, and you're doing everything in your power to make sure that happens? Categorically, yes. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it's an effort that we're engaged in all the time. Uh, I think that Hamas is working on the opposite effort. One, 
to get people uh, not to leave uh, war zones. They want more civilian casualties. We want to minimize civilian casualties. And the second, they want to they want to commandeer the humanitarian aid and bring it to their underground terror tunnels, and we want it to reach the Palestinian population. So the blame should be laid squarely at Hamas's door, and instead, I find it both uh, cynical and wrong, just factually wrong, to try to place the blame on Israel, which is doing everything it can to minimize civilian casualties and to get to the humanitarian aid, and Hamas, which is doing the opposite, yeah. instead think, of placing the blame on Hamas. Yeah. We'll continue to do it, regardless, regardless of the uh, PR uh, uh, distortions. Yeah, I mean, I think that there is no question that Hamas is uh, a nefarious organization doing everything it can to undermine what's going on and to create chaos. But I guess the point is, is that you're not Hamas. Israel is a democracy and uh, uh, as a Jewish state uh, supports right. and, and believes in every life mattering. And so I'm glad to hear that you say that you're going to do what you can to get those aid trucks in. And obviously we'll be watching. And I'm sure a lot of uh, organizations are going to be happy to hear what you said today. Thank you so much, Mr. Prime Minister. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Donald. Thank you.